Douglas Lima, who did very, very well against Michael Venom Page, handing him his first professional loss, knocking him out in the second round. What a performance that was. What a knockout that was. What a highlight that was. Amazing stuff from Douglas Lima, who joins us right now via the Magic of Skype. Douglas, how are you? I'm great, brother. How are you? I'm doing really well, and thank you very much for joining us, and congratulations. Uh, you have had many great moments in Bellator and outside of Bellator, but I, I heard you say afterwards that you felt like that was the best moment of your career. You've won the belt before. Why is this one the best? Uh, man, you know, every time you get a good finish like that, you know, it's always the best moment. You know, that was the latest, so, you know, I just consider that one the best. Just because, uh, you know, also Michael Page, an undefeated fighter, you know, never lost in MMA, you know, and I was able to put him out like that. Uh, it was good. It was good for me. It was a great moment. You know, um, the knockout is being talked about. You know, a lot of people are, you know, talking about it and kind of went viral a little bit. So uh, it's good. It's good for me. It's good for my career. And, uh, you know, make, the, make it even better, you know, when I get this title back. So, like I said, MVP was undefeated, um, a very tricky fighter, uh, an unorthodox fighter, likes to do a lot of crazy things in there. First round, it seemed like it, it took you a little bit of time to sort of figure him out. What, what is it like fighting MVP? How tricky is he in there? Man, he's a very tricky fighter. You know, I knew, I knew in the beginning he was going to be very fast. You know what I mean? So I just try to stay patient, you know, that whole time, you know, try to land a few leg kicks here and there. Uh, but I knew he was ready for it, and he was waiting for it to counterattack, you know. I think he hit me a couple of times there. And, uh, yeah, it was just pretty much figuring it out, waiting for the right moment, you know, because I knew he was going to be very explosive, very fast. And I said it before, you know, he's a very uh, hard guy to hit, you know. I mean, a lot of his career, I don't think he has been hit, you know what I mean, because he moves so well. And... Uh, I knew it was going to be like that. I, I had to be very patient. You know, he does his stuff, his dances there to throw people off. You know what I mean? He did his basketball thing yeah. in between the first round, I think. Somebody told me that. I didn't even notice it until they told me about it, you know. So I was really focused on him, you know, on the fight itself and not what he was going to do there, you know. But uh, definitely, man, he's, a very, he's very fast, you know, especially in the beginning. And uh, I was I was waiting for that. Yeah, he, he was sort of mimicking putting a basketball between his legs. And this, at uh, times, uh, has ruffled people's feathers. And, and people think it's disrespectful. As someone who has been there with him in the cage, do you feel like it's disrespectful? Like, it, it's always okay once you win, but then you get knocked out after doing that sort of stuff. Like, like do you feel like this is the sort of thing that shouldn't happen in an MMA fight? I mean... Yes, I could say that, but man, he's been doing that his whole career. You know, I think that's part of his game plan. Because like you said, man, he throws everybody off when he does that. People get mad. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's when that's when they run into something, you know. Uh, you know, the whole goal going into this fight is not letting that go to my head. Because man, if you get mad inside there, you kind of lose yourself. You lose the game plan. You're going to get caught against a guy like that. So... For me, I had to stay focused, you know, don't let that bug me. And I think that's what I did. And because uh, like I said, man, I didn't even notice that he did the dribbling thing until after the fight, until somebody told me, you know, my main focus was just to wait for the right moment and to connect the big shot. Uh, and I think I did that pretty good. You know, I stayed calm, you know, and um, slowly but surely, I had 25 minutes. I knew at one point I was going to connect and catch him. So... Right before you finished him, it did seem like he rocked you, like you were a bit on wobbly yep. legs. How hurt were you? I was pretty hurt. You know, I was trying to find myself, you know, after, you know, my legs got a little shaky. Uh, but still, you know, I stayed composed, you know. And he, I think he got very comfortable once he connected that because that landed right behind the ear. I think I ducked, you know, trying to hide the, the chin. And my hands dropped at the same time. So it connected really good. and. Uh, and I seen after that, he got very comfortable. You know, he put his hand on his knee and he just stayed there. So I was like, all right, he's going to come now. And this is the moment, you know. So I just timed that kick really good. You know, kind of took the legs from under him. And, uh, yeah, he came up right at the same time that I threw that uppercut. And just, it was lights out. But uh, that 
punch did connect on me. I was a little dazed for sure. And I think I got mad, man. I really got mad after he hit me with that. <laughs> and then I, you know, got the KO. You know, I don't think I even needed those last two shots because he was out. You know, but at the time, you know, I didn't, you know, I was just going, I was just going with it, you know, until the referee stopped it and, and I got it done. It was good. The finishing sequence happened so quickly that initially it felt like you almost like grazed him, like you didn't fully connect. Right. Did you fully connect? Uh, it did just graze the chin, the, you know, the chin, but those are the worst shots, man. Like the one that just scrapes, you know, the head, the chin, that's the one that's going to put everybody away. And uh, I threw it very, I mean, I put a lot in between that punch because, man, my hand was all the way back, you know, so it, it, was a, it was a hard punch. I think if it would have landed, you know, straight on the jaw like that, I think it would have been a lot worse. But as far as the knockout, that's the one that shakes the brain a lot more, you know, the one that just scrapes. And uh, I think that's what happened there. So, so I wasn't, you know, I think he was out after I hit it, but I wasn't sure. So I had to throw those extra, you know, just to make sure, you know, because, you know, I knew I, I knew I had him hurt, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, and I had to, I had to, to keep punching until the referee stopped it. Because the knockout came just seconds after he sort of rocked you, were you like 100% there after the fight was over? Or did you need some time? No, I needed, I needed a little time. It's like, you know, I got hurt, and then right after that, I KO'd him. So I just, man, after I was done, I was like, crap, let me find myself here. So I just <laughs> walked around a little bit. And uh, I think they actually made the walk out a lot better. Because, <laughs> you know, I just KO'd him. Everybody's, you know, screaming, and, and I was just chilling. I was just walking around, <laughs> you know. Uh, but that's something that I always do. Like, I, I mean, a lot of times when I get a knockout like that, I don't like to, you know, scream, celebrate too much, you know, when the guy's KO'd on the ground, you know. So I kind of just stay there, chill, let the, let the few seconds, <laughs> let, it, let it settle a little, and then I jumped in the cage. But, uh, yeah, it was just a surreal moment, man. It's a, a get a knockout, you know, at the level of fight, you know, that, that one was, you know, co-main event on a big show, main event. It was just good. It was just good to get a victory like that. I noticed you guys exchanged words afterwards. What did you say to him? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't even remember what I said, but I just told him, man, like, man, it, he's also a guy that I respected very much, you know, ever since the first time I ever met him. We're always being cool. I always show each other mutual respect, you know, so I just told him to keep it up. You know, I, you know that was nothing. You know, he's still the man, you know, and I know he's going to come back from that, you know what I mean? So I was just trying to keep him motivated because you never know what to say after a knockout. You know, the guy... He was probably still out of it, you know what I mean? Because he was he stayed on the ground for for a little while after the knockout. So I just try to keep him motivated, you know, because I know I know how it is, you know, to lose with a bad knockout like that. You know what I mean? But uh I'm sure he's gonna come back for me, man. He's a tough guy, he's a great fighter, you know, it's just uh just the first loss. So I'm just trying to keep him, you know, motivated. I don't know if you saw, but he wrote on on Instagram. Uh, a long message and, and, and mentioned that if he was going to lose to someone, he's happy that it was you because he has a lot of respect for you. Did you see that? Yes, I actually saw it. You know, I actually wrote something back, you know, uh, to him. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's good, it's good to get that type of respect, you know, especially against, especially from a guy like that, you know, because he's, he's usually not that, not like that against all the guys that he fights, you right. know what I mean? So it's good. It's good to get that respect. And uh, I'm a respectful guy, too. I mean, I don't like the, the smack talk, you know. I'm just not made for that. I don't know how to do that. That's not me. And uh, I show everybody respect, you know. Of course, when it's inside the cage, it's different. We fight hard, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's good to get that type of, you know, mutual respect from fighters. Okay, so now you move along to the finals. Uh, the other half of the semifinals, Roy McDonald versus Neiman Gracie. Are you hoping that it's Rory because he beat you for the title? Do you want that fight? For sure. <laughs> if I were to pick, you know, of course I would pick Rory. You know, uh, beat me before in a close decision. You know, so I'm still, I'm still looking for that fight, for that rematch. You know what I mean? Rory is a game fighter. You know, he's been around for so long. He's got a, a big name in this sport. So it's good if it's him. You know, but uh, but at the same time, I'm not even thinking about it. You know. Let them fight. Let the best man win. The main goal for me is to get the title. Man, I just, I want to get that title back so bad. You know what I mean? I still feel like I'm the champion. You know what I mean? People always call me, hey, champ, what's up, champ? So, 
And I was like, man, I got to get this belt back. You know what I mean? But we're in the right track, you know, one fight away. Uh, I can't wait for that fight. You know, I'll be there in New York for sure, checking it out. You know what I mean? Uh, I think it's going to be in September. They told me it's going to be exactly one year, you know, until the tournament finishes. So, yes, I'm looking forward to that fight. You know, Neyman's game too. You know, he's a good opponent. So, yeah, we're always going to have a, a really tough fight ahead of him. So, let them fight first, you know, and let's see. Let's see, you know, who's going to face me, you know, at the finals. I can't wait. But the main thing is to get the bell back. So Rory's comments after his fight against John Fitch obviously caused a um, you know a lot of news and and some controversy, if you will. A uh, very interesting guy, uh, fascinating mm-hmm. comments in my opinion. What did you make of them? Do you understand what he's saying? Do you do you sympathize with him? What were your your feelings when you heard what he had to say? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think uh, I think it was very good that he came out. You know, spoke from the heart. You know, I respect that a lot. Uh, definitely understand him, you know, where he's coming from. I'm a Christian myself, and, you know, every time you really get close to God like that, something changes, you know, like your heart. You just got to change your heart. And uh, I think for him, he's just got to decide, you know, if it's really time to hang the gloves or if he can keep still fighting. I know he said something about, you know, he doesn't want to hurt people anymore. For me, it's different because... I look at it as a sport, you know what I mean? I respect everybody, you know, when I fight, I don't know, my main, my number one goal is not to go over there and hurt somebody. I just want to win a fight, you know what I mean? If the guy gets hurt or I get hurt, it's just, you know, part of the sport, you know what I mean? So, uh, I mean, it's good for him, and I'm really happy for him that he found that peace, you know, that happiness, you know, in his heart, uh, but it's up to him, you know. He's got to decide what he wants to do. I hope he keeps fighting, you know. He's, uh, you know, not only what I, you know, I want to fight him again, but I'm also a big fan of him, you know. He throws some exciting fights. I always have, you know, he's a young guy. You know, he's, I think he's still got a lot left in this sport, you know what I mean? But it's going to be up to him, you know, what he's going to do. I hope he comes at 100% because, uh, you know, when you step in there, you're mental. You got to be 100%. You know what I mean, mentally. And, uh, you know, if you go in there thinking about something else, thinking that if you should or should not be in there, I think it's going to be bad for you. Because yeah. Neyman is, uh, you know, he's a young opponent. You know, he's ready. He's hungry. You know, he's got this big opportunity in front of him. You know, so, I mean, I think Rory's got to come 100% on that fight. Yeah, I, I mentioned earlier today in, in my column, I said that if you're not 100% focused when fighting you, um mm-hmm who hits really, really hard, that that could be a scary thing. So, so hopefully he, you know, feels comfortable. And if all goes well against Neiman, he'll, you know, be hundred percent focused fighting you. By the way, I also mentioned that I hate when Bellator and the UFC go head to head because I feel like I can't focus on, on one card by itself. Does it bother you when you're fighting at the same time as a UFC card? Do you feel like you don't get the attention that you deserve? Uh, yeah, I do actually. <laughs> uh, Man, so many days in the year, you know, why do they got to put the card at the same time? Uh, it definitely takes, you know, more attention out of, you know, certain fights here and there because, you know, some people want to watch one fight, but there's another good one going on at the same time. But uh, even with that, I think that was pretty good. You know, uh, from, you know, from all I hear, I think my knockout went viral. <laughs> you know, everybody's talking about that. I think that's the fight that people's been talking about the most this weekend. You know what I mean? But, man, it could be in a lot better. You know what I mean? If, yeah. If there was just one show going on, if, every, you know, if all the focus was just on, you know, one event. So I think it's better if it's just one show at night. You know, it's just, man, there's so many days. You know, they could do it on a Sunday. <laughs> or we could do it on a Sunday. You know, I don't like that competition, you know, between events. I think it takes, you know, the, the shine away from, from certain fights, you know. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. I agree. Or just make Fridays Bellator's night because they do so many shows on Friday. Just do it Friday and then have the UFC on Saturday so you're not going head-to-head. I couldn't agree more. Yep. It, it must have been nice to catch up with your old friend 50 Cent, right? <laughs> it was. It was cool, but, man, I don't know. He didn't seem too happy after the yeah, fight, man. I know. <laughs> it looked like he was rooting for MVP. What's up with that? Uh, that's how I felt, man. You know, he that's gave whack. me, you know, the, the bottle that he always does and, you know, he went to MVP right away to talk to him and, I don't know, man. He didn't look that excited. You know what I mean? I don't know what's up with that. You know, 
but I, I really think he was he's a big fan of MVP you know he was rooting for him that's you know that's the feeling that I got but uh man as long as he keeps his promise you yes. know and keep that money and there's good with me but you know he didn't even share the knockout you know everybody shared that thing he didn't share it wow so. <laughs> 50 cent is a hater but, come on 50 you know gotta show some love too brother you don't need him <laughs> He's washed up. His career is over. <laughs> you're up. on the you're on the rise, my man. You're knocking out MVP. You don't need 50 Cent, all right? You've got everyone talking about you. Who needs that guy? He picked the wrong horse. That's what I say. <laughs> Douglas, congratulations, my man. I'm very happy for you. What an amazing performance. What an amazing win. Uh, we'll see you out there in New York and looking forward to the fina finale later this year. Appreciate it, brother. Man, it means a lot. You know, it was good. You know, thank you all for the support. And I can't wait, you know, to see who I'm fighting next. That's going to be fun. All right, there he is, Douglas Lima.